Hello, all of you beautiful hive scum, and welcome to another Astro Max video. Feels good. This feels good. I'm happy to be back in front of the camera talking to all of you again about 10th edition. Warhammer Fest is right around the corner, two days away or so, so I wanted to take this opportunity to revisit everything we know about 10th edition so far. Maybe not everything, but revisit a lot of what we know about 10th edition so far. So the way I decided to do this episode was to look at the underwhelming, the overwhelming, and the simply whelmed. For those of you following along at home, yes, I was watching Young Justice recently, but I also discovered recently that that quote actually comes from 10 Things I Hate About You. So without any further ado, let's jump into nine things we know about 10th edition so far and where they fall on my rankings of the underwhelming to the overwhelming and everything in between, which would just be whelmed. Picked one article from the Warhammer community, read it and decided if it was overwhelmingly positive, underwhelming, or just plain whelming. First up, we have underwhelming. Keep in mind all of the things that are gonna fall into the underwhelming category don't necessarily mean that I dislike them. It means that I need more information on them and based solely on what's on the Warhammer community website and what we know so far about 10th, these aren't really doing much for me at all and a little disheartening. And the first one up is Smurfs versus Bugs. Again, I think the tier knit aspect of this is really cool. And I like that it's sent, set in the Segmentum Pacificus, which is away from Ultramar, the 500 worlds of Ultramar and all of that. But yet somehow still, even with a whole nother Primarch returning, we have the Ultramarines going to fight the Tyranids and not even... And it's the same freaking High Fleet. It's Leviathan, again, because somehow this just speaks to the absurdity of the scale of, of Warhammer, which in, in itself is endearing and fun. But at the same time, you know, the galaxy is massive. The fact that you can have a tendril of the High Fleet Leviathan over here and a tendril of the High Fleet Leviathan, you know, over here, and they're like jaws closing in, that sounds really cool. It sounds very much on brand for Games Workshop being something that oftentimes reads like a 15-year-old in their basement. But at the same time, you've spent how many additions building up the Tyranids as this hyper-adaptive, all these tendrils are different, but they're all part of the same hive mind. And so here you have an opportunity to introduce a really big awesome new high fleet with a whole new identity because it's a new addition and everything and instead we're just going to rehash leviathan that's going to bring me to the first of what i'm simply whelmed about and the first thing i'm simply whelmed about not up not down just whelmed the librarian the librarian model itself is fantastic. It's beautiful. Um, I love the like the runes that are carved into it, and the force axe is great. The various heads are cool. Like this is a beautiful model. Where where I'm kind of like meh, and this comes up again later. We talk about psychic powers. Um, Smite seems okay, fine. I'm not crazy about the idea that it casts or is cast just like a normal weapon would be. That seems like a simplification for simplification's sake. The other thing I'm a little concerned about with this librarian that moves him from the overwhelmingly positive to the whelmed category is I'm, I'm starting to worry a little bit that the, the Space Marine side of this is overly pushed, but I'm envisioning land raiders with Terminators being led by Terminator librarians spilling out of them, assault cannons dealing mortal wounds, being protected with a five up feel no pain on top of a two plus save on top of a four plus and vulnerable save. <laughs> Terminators just seem a little bonkers. And as someone who is not a space Marine first player, that has me whelmed. I'm right, moving into the first of the things that I think are overwhelmingly positive. We're talking the changes to the weapons rules. So let's, let's start with the flexibility of model choices themselves so let's look at what the a couple of examples we have so far first one being the normal space marine intercessor it doesn't matter what you build your model with because now it's just a bolt rifle and it does a heavy thing and it does an assault thing and the regular bolt line the bolt gun profile is built in there 
So this is cool. It, it can be an assault weapon, so you can advance and shoot it. The penalty's removed, so no minus one to hit on your ballistic skill. And then heavy, instead of being a penalty, again, it's just, if you don't move, you get plus one. So you, it incentivizes you to not move instead of penalizing you for moving. And if you do need to move, you might as well advance, because then you can move extra distance, and it's still the same ballistic skill uh, check on that weapon. So I think that's great. Uh, it is time for another underwhelming thing. And again, keep in mind that these aren't necessarily changes that I think are universally bad. They are just changes that going into Warhammer Fest, these are things I want more information on. And the second thing I want more information on is changes to the psychic phase. Rather, the psychic phase is gone. So what does that mean for psychic armies? The psychic phase being gone in and of itself is fine. I play Thousand Suns, and I will agree with the Warhammer community article in that Against a lot of opponents, it is not an interactive way to play the game. And after a little while of playing, I still love my Thousand Sons, but it's a boring army to play. Like, really, pretty quickly, I kind of got tired of it. So, I'm I'm okay with the, the dissolving of the Psychic phase. What has me a little concerned is Psychic skill, Psychic tests are basically the same as any other weapon now, so they don't have any distinguishing flavor to them and i look at, at factions like thousand sons and what are their aspiring sorcerers going to be able to do i think maybe all is dust is just going to be the thing that's on the the aspiring sorcerer they're not going to get like the ability to equip all of these squads with all of these different spells and have this huge toolbox of psychic abilities that i can draw from is really fun that part is cool about the thousand sons the army building stage of thousand sons is the most fun you're ever going to have with Thousand Sons, my opinion, whatever. The fact that that's gone and is going to be replaced by just universal abilities for aspiring sorcerers, allegedly, is a bit of a bummer. The other thing I really need to know about psychic phase stuff, psychic abilities going into this, what happens to psychic secondaries? Are they gone? Perils of the Warp doesn't appear to be a thing anymore. And how do I deny the witch? Am I going to be able to deny the witch? It doesn't say anywhere on the librarian data sheet, you know, anything about denying. Thing number two that I am simply whelmed about when it comes to 10th edition so far is detachments and the way this is going to work. Parts of this I really like, and parts of this I need more information on. So what we know about detachments so far, we know that when the index is dropped for 10th edition, everyone's, all factions are going to have one detachment. That's going to come with a detachment special ability. For the Gene Stealer cults, what is our, what is our faction special ability going to be? Is it going to be something revolving ambushes and underground and deep strikes? Or is it going to be something more like crossfire? Based on what we know from the article on, on what we can see in the Space Marines and what we can see on the Tyranids, there doesn't appear to be a lot that I have to work for as the player to get. I like Crossfire be and Exposed because I have to put in a little effort to get the big reward out. There's some interaction with the game itself. The Tyranid one kind of just looks like you walk up to the table, you look at what you're playing, you pick your best adaptation. Okay, there's some interaction there, right? I, I pick my flavor based on my opponent. Maybe I misjudge what my opponent's plan is, and I and now I've picked the wrong thing. But for the most part, it looks like you're going to be able to pretty much pick the best thing based on your matchup. Second thing I think is overwhelmingly positive, and we're talking transports. Oh my god, what a revelation that super elite killing machines of the 41st millennia have figured out how to drive and jump out of a car at the same time. This might have existed in a previous edition that I'm just unaware of. If that's the case, cool. Glad life has come full circle. The capacity seems to have gone up because the repulsor that's featured in the article now has a transport capacity of 12. Awesome. I like that assault ramps and the ability to disembark and charge is still in the game, but it's gonna be hard to access. Just getting out of the transport and shooting Seems cool. Seems fine. So it's a win for the realism of the game, and it's a win for the for just the play of the game and the and the fun of the game. The vehicles are really cool. They're some of the best models. I'm excited to see more of them come about. Three left, my good hive scum. We have 
the least whelming thing, the most whelming thing, and the most positively overwhelming thing that I can think of so far about 10th edition. And we will start with the least whelming thing of 10th edition so far. What do you think it will be? (gasps) Another Primaris Lieutenant! What do you know? There's one thing that the Warhammer 40,000 model line was really lacking. Lieutenants. There was a dearth of options at the lieutenant position. I'm glad we've got that all sorted out now. Thank you, Games Workshop, for giving every fan exactly what they were looking for. Moving on. Ah, yes, the most whelming thing of 10th edition so far. Uh, Oh, wait, we have a memo here before we get to that. And Van Halen would like their jump back. We're talking Von Ryan's Leaper. I really hope that this is just somebody's inside joke on the decade that, that gave birth to this wonderful game and perhaps when this codex ha- when when the index is actually released these will have a different name than von ryan's leaper or- and that brings me to the number one thing that i am overwhelmed uh, i believe is overwhelmingly positive about the changes to 10th edition and here we have a slight tie so the honorable mention here is that it's going to be free and everything's going to be available on day one that is just really cool but also because I'm a little concerned about the lack of flavor and how fast they're going to be able to put these codexes out. There are too many questions here to be a truly overwhelmingly positive thing. So we'll set that to the side for a second, and we will instead talk about terrain. Forests are good, ruins are good, but there, there, seem to be, there seem to be just a million pages of rules for terrain that never, ever, ever came up or got used or did really, like, provided anything. Now it looks like... There's going to be six categories for terrain. Each one's going to function a little bit different, but the benefits are all kind of universal. So the benefit of cover is a universal special rule now, plus one to your saves. Great. I really like that there's a cap to it. If you have an armor save of three plus already, so if you're a Terminator and you're in cover and I'm shooting you with something that is AP zero, the cover doesn't benefit you whatsoever. It's not like suddenly you are on a a one-up save, right? That's gone. I have to be shooting you with at least armor penetration of one, which then the cover would just cancel out. So you're still at your normal armor save. One of my big hopes going into Warhammer Fest or for when this edition actually drops is that we get some sort of universal layout for for terrain. Perhaps it'll be tied directly to the mission packs or something like that. I'm not a huge fan of player place terrain. It just seems kind of weird that you're going to spend all this time balancing a game to be played in a competitive environment, which I don't think Warhammer is really at its best in a competitive environment, but it is certainly a fun environment competitively Warhammer is. So you spend all this time trying to balance this game around it, and you spend almost no time trying to balance the board that the game is actually going to be played on. That's what really drives me crazy about ninth edition terrain. And I hope that the changes, these changes seem to indicate that Games Workshop is going to pay more attention to this going into the new edition. And that is overwhelmingly a positive thing. So things I'm really looking forward to in Warhammer Fest, while we have a couple minutes here, we know we're going to get the entire boxed set um previewed so we're going to know all all the models that are going to come in that set i'm I'm excited for that even the primaris lieutenant he's a pretty cool model damn you games workshop so i'm excited to see the the whole box set i'm also really excited to see how a complete detachment all their rules all their enhancements are everything are put together further changes to the psychic phase so I hope that the Tyranid, I hope that the launch set for 10th edition comes with some sort of Tyranid Psyker as well, so that maybe in a, in some play testing that we'll see this weekend, because I'm sure it's only going to be that box set, I'm hoping we see some Psyker versus Psyker interactions so we can determine if there is such a thing as Perils of the Warp, are there Psychic secondaries anymore? What are the secondaries even going to look like? Nobody's talked about scoring yet, right? That hasn't come up in any of the Warhammer community 
community articles. What are secondaries and missions going to look like? That's going to be a big one. All right, that is going to wrap up this whelmed, whelmed, and whelming episode. Thank you for checking it out. If you like this episode, go ahead and give it a subscribe. Hit the like button. Ring the bell for notifications so you know when more content comes out. It'll be next week. We'll be recapping Warhammer Fest, so don't miss that. Ring the bell for notifications. Subscribe. Let me know what you're most excited for in 10th edition. Uh, Let me know if there's some stuff particularly after Fest, Warhammer Fest, if there's stuff you definitely, definitely want to deep dive and explore, leave it in the comments. I'll look at that before I record my reactions to Warhammer Fest so we can get it all kind of covered in there. It'll be a good time. Thank you for checking this out again. Can't say thank you enough to all of you subscribers out there. You guys rock. And until next time, geek your own way.